America. My name is Aramio Sefrimpong. I come to you live every Friday. I'm going to come to you a little bit early on Wednesday morning, my time, because I woke up to find out that Nina Turner had lost. And let me tell you, you're going to hear a lot of bad takes about why that's the case. I'm going to give you the truth and help you kind of find your way through the morass of how to think about our political situation. All right, so Nina Turner lost, not because she's a bad candidate. She's a very good candidate. She's won state office before. She is good at campaigning. She knows the electoral machinery. This wasn't an issue of voter suppression either. That's not the case. It turns out that um, this is Nina Turner lost for the same reason that Bernie lost in South Carolina. Black institutions are regressive. I'll say this again. Black institutions are regressive. Black people are progressive. Black institutions are regressive <clears throat> for two reasons. One, it takes money, disposable income, to sustain an institution, and disposable income is not attracted to black progress. In fact, disposable income is attracted to controlling black progress progress and i think bobby wright said this right and i think i'm gonna so i'm just gonna repeat what he said if you control the black mind you control the black behind so and um so there are a lot of institutions that will give money will give money to black leaders in order to control the black mind in a way that actually confuses the role of government in their lives right so um you have I mean, if your institution is calling for black charity where black political justice is necessary, that means that you're, you're functionally just um, confusing the role of government in people's lives, right? Because charity doesn't do what government does. Government does what government does, right? So don't expect charity to secure rights. Although white liberals will tell you charity secures rights because they control charity. They, they have the disposable income to, to control charity and jobs and all that stuff. So... Um, so what you need in order to have a progressive black politics that actually reflects the progressive sentiments of the people, and when you say when I say that black uh, people are progressive, I, I pretty much, I mean, I mean, take a look at this, right? So black men, there's this notion that black men are somehow regressive. Actually, they're more like they're one of the most progressive blocks in the nation, um, uh, in terms of like the role of government lives and, and all of that. And this is a um, a comparison of black men and white women because everyone assumes that white women are progressive. And now it turns out that black men are much more progressive on all like on the major issues, the poor, education, child care. Uh, and so, but our institutions are regressive. I'll say this again. Black people, progressive, black institutions, regressive, which is why we're often alienated from institutions in general. You can say, like, what about the black church? How many, you go to a black church, you're going to find a handful of black women, like three black guys, and um, and that's all we have as an institution. We have that institution because that's the institution that white people let us have. And this whole idea that, well, you know, black churches used to be radical. No, they didn't. My, there's a reason why the civil rights leaders were very young. It's because all of the institutional leaders didn't want anything to do with Martin Luther King. Even Martin Luther King's daddy, Daddy King, did not want to do anything wrong. He thought that Negro was going to get other people killed. And a lot of pastors agreed. You know, the best... There, I'm sure there's better work on this, but Lester um, spent his book, Knocking the Hustle, the neoliberal term in black politics, you know, it kind of opened my eyes to the distinction between black institutional interests and like black justice interests. And he's he got a chapter on black church and black and king. Um, and just don't expect progress to come out of the black church as it is. Now, there's there are variants of the black church that will work. Liberation theology which is how I'm going to kind of end this, uh, this segment. But you have to understand that black institutions are actively regressing. They're trying to control the black mind. So the way, so you don't blame Nina Turner for losing. She ran a good campaign. This wasn't about getting out the vote. This wasn't about spending money on more organizing. This, is a, this was a loss of a social, this was a social loss because black social institutions are regressive. And people say like, well, what about Cori Bush? And I'll say, well, you know, Cori Bush is a black woman running against a black man, and that matters a lot in Democratic primaries. It, it's, Democratic primaries are one of the few institutions in these United States. Democratic primaries in predominantly black areas are one of the few institutions in these United States where it actually is a benefit um, to be a black woman. Right. So what you're going to find out is when Jim Clyburn goes, when Jim Clyburn retires, they're going to find a 45 year old black woman to try to run against him. 
when I say them, I say like all of the awful black people in, <laughs> in, in DC politics are going to try to find a 45 year old black woman to run against him. When, um, uh, when John Lewis died, they found Akima Williams to run against him. Like they're going to find someone who's just progressive enough to, uh, to blunt out anyone who would actually like get in, in Nancy Pelosi's way or try to, uh, change the discourse to something that's more healthful. Uh, for black justice, right? So um, you have to be prepared for that. I'm preparing you now. This, and we will continue to lose these elections. We, as in those who consider, consider themselves on the black left, will consider to lo- will continue to lose these elections until we understand that we don't lose political elections through politics. We lose political elections through a lack of social organization and understanding that black institutions as they stand are actively regressing and will work like antibodies to to take us out because these institutions are mutually reinforcing um a kind of crappy politics that's funded by you know you know white money right so um the antidote is Black social organizations around the left, right? So you need a liberation church. You can't just have black politics without black social organizations. Now, what's the difference between a social organization and a political organization? A social organization is has a particular interest. They're not concerned about everybody. They're concerned about their particular um, interest in civil society, which is often competitive. You know, politicals, uh, uh, political organizations are concerned about everybody. When Nina Turner is elected, she's not just elected for, um, you know, the working people and the poor people. She's elected to govern everybody, and she will govern everybody with an eye towards democ- democratizing power um, to the people who need it, which are going to be working people and poor people, right? But, for example, the labor union is just going to be concerned with its workers. It's going to be have a particular interest, uh, even antagonistic interest, uh, for its workers, Right? So you can have certain social interests that uphold an idea of the universal interests, but are distinct from, uh, in scope, their interests, right? So yeah, focus on the family on the right, right? So focus on the family has a very kind of uh, conservative Christian understanding of what the family entails. And, you know, it'll come with all these gender commitments and, and that are not... I think part of a just com- a just family and uh, gender assumptions and commitments that are not part of a just family. But those social commitments uphold a vision of politics that's put forth by the Republican GOP, right? So there you have a social organization that upholds a political vision, right? This is a particular social organization that upholds a universal uh, political vision. Right? So you need, if you're serious on the left, um, you need a left version of focus on the family because there are, uh, and that keeps the nuclear family because I think nuclear family is awesome. It's an emancipation from clan governance because you don't want random uncles and aunties telling you what to do. So it's um, to how to organize your household. So the nuclear family is actually a, a, a progressive institution um, as opposed to feudal or, 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 or clan governance where like there's just kind of one grandpa who tells everyone what to do. No, nuclear family is awesome, but you don't run the nuclear family with the quality of gender um, distribution of labor and gender distribution of uh, risk that the focus on the family and the conservative family wants, right? And liberalism, since it doesn't actually, it's vacuous, (laughs) um, uh, just kind of leaves us all up to like, well, you know, do what you want. That doesn't work either. You actually need substantive understandings of what families are for and therefore like the co-determination of the household between the adults of the household and how to raise children and, and how to like the immediate connection of the household um where you're immediately vulnerable to you and by the way this is why like you can't really be at war with your spouse because they can poison you at any moment and we don't do autopsies everywhere so you actually need to understand that the most important thing to look for in a spouse is someone who could creatively solve problems with you that's the most important thing but not someone who's going to earn or provide, not someone who's going to protect, not someone who's going to raise, not someone who's going to be solely in charge of raising kids, not that division of labor in the, in the white family. You need, um, in, in the white conservative family, what you need um, in a left family, in a progressive family, is someone who's going to problem solve with you as an equal. And so that any problems that come your way, either internally or externally, 
uh, you know, lose a job, lose a house or something like that. Like you can figure it out. Like that is what a progressive focus on the family will teach. Creative problem solving from external and internal shocks. Because that's the most, like, as equals. You're not going to get that in, in Focus on the Family. Focus on the Family will be like, well, you know, the man has, um, uh, what is, it? Uh, is in charge of provision and protection. And what that ends up being is uh, exploitation and protection means anything from killing spiders to killing Negroes. So, um, the, like, that's why the way... Uh, focus on the family or the conservative families organized ends up leading itself to racial segregation and women in charge of being uh, being scared pretty much you're in charge of being scared <laughs> we are and, and doing laundry doing laundry and being scared that's 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 the white uh the white femininity um because if women are scared of things that means men have to protect and that just always ends up leading in, like racialized neighborhoods and um uh, you know, a form of policing. So you have to understand that how you organize a family as a social project ends up upholding certain political visions, right? How you organize black institutions um, as social institutions upholds a certain political vision. And right now our institutions are funded by and sustained by and always looked by people who don't have black progress in mind. I, you know, Mackenzie Bezos um, I uh, gave a lot of money to HBCUs. Uh, and if you think that HBCUs, Mackenzie Bezos is, uh, Mackenzie Scott is Jeff Bezos' ex-wife who's worth like, you know, a cool $60 billion. Which, if you don't know, $60 billion is more money than you can think of. Right? Not a lot of money to her. I mean, $60 billion is a lot of money to her. But like a few million dollars isn't a lot of money to her. Uh, but it's a lot of money to you. But $60 billion is pretty much more money that your brain is ready to, you, like, you just don't know how to think in that kind of money. So when she gives a lot of money to HBCUs, it's a lot of money to the HBCUs, but it's not a lot of money to, like, her. But it, it but what it means is if uh, Mackenzie Bezos, uh, Mackenzie Scott, um, I'm just getting the article right now, it, uh, has ideas about racial justice, her ideas about racial justice a lot, uh, matter a lot more than someone like Sandy Darity's. Uh, who's a professor at Duke who actually you know, has very good ideas about racial justice, but isn't worth $60 billion, right? So I'm just going to put a uh, graphic of Mackenzie Bezos' gift to HBCUs. Right. So this is Mackenzie's, you know, she's throwing out 10 and $15 million to random HBCUs. And that means that her, what she thinks, which if she reads an article in the New Yorker that says something about what racial justice entails, that's going to mean a lot to those HBCUs, not just the ones she gave to, the ones who want her money to give to in the future. So they're going to start like distorting their curriculum um, uh, to, to cater to her, like, like not just needs, her, her opinions about what racial justice entails. And that might not necessarily be good for us, right? So you have these institutions like HBCUs. And remember, HBCUs, they fired W.B. Du Bois. W.B. Du Bois was fired for ticking off a white donor, uh, for potentially ticking off a white donor. They, uh, uh, that was from Clark Atlanta. Uh, it was just Atlanta University. He fired Du Bois, one of the you know, best black minds of the 20th century. Fired him for, for ticking off a white donor. Howard Zinn, fired from Spelman. Howard Zinn. A historian, you might have heard of him. He was a he's a historian who actually made his way into history. Uh, he, he was fired from Spelman for radicalizing too many like young black women, right? So uh, these HBCUs are conservative institutions that then produce leaders who uphold the status quo. This is like what Booker T. Washington pretty much sold white America. I will start black schools that will create the quality of black Negroes who will not challenge your political power. And he has succeeded in creating the quality of black schools that create the quality of black Negroes who will not challenge white political power. And every now and then they get through, like MLK or, or Marion Barry. Like, there's a class. Yeah, um, but like they're treated like weeds. <laughs> they're treated like problems and not just in The Invisible Man, that's an Ellison novel, but just in, in they're treated like problems by the institutions. 
themselves, right? So you have to understand that, uh, you know, black radicals, when they're, by the time they get through black institutions, if they're still radicals, they are uh, um, bugs, not features of the system. Feature of the system is the black conservative or the black neoliberal, which is basically a black conservative insofar as they don't think that government has a place in securing justice for black people. Right? So, how do you get around this? Well, you, you plant social institutions. You need to plant social institutions as part of your political project. Right? And where did I get this idea? Well, I mean, I study a lot of Hegel, and Hegel saw this in, in Napoleon's efforts in Spain. He's like, the, the Spanish people, the way they kind of had religion... And the, uh, I, uh, like the way they thought of properties and family governance, it was all just too provincial to take a Napoleonic code and a constitution. Like it wasn't ready for that kind of rule of law. They had rule of uncle blank and blank. <laughs> and um, if the Napoleonic code depends on a breaking of some of these familiar ties, Spain's not, Spain's not going to break these familiar ties. So you had to have the social... Um, organization that uphold that upheld like equality under the Napoleonic Code, right? Um, so you need social factors that uphold the political vision, and if you don't have those social factors that uphold the political vision, you're not going to get the political vision. Uh, and then we see this with U.S. nation building all over. We try to like import American democracy onto uh, nations that do not have a, you know the social undercurrent. The, the social factors that would uphold American democracy. And American democracy is not like super great. Um, it doesn't come with like a robust understanding of the press. And, and, and like, so we have um, a democracy that's barely fit for America and then try to like, you know, throw it on and import it to Afghanistan without understanding that it needs to be upheld by different social factors. It's a specific and particular understanding of property, a particular understanding of family, a particular understanding of civil society, including jobs and production, and a, a particular understanding of media and media infrastructure. And if you try to just kind of throw democracy as a political organiza organization on top of uh, a community that doesn't have the social factors that would uphold the rule of law, for example, and lawyers and all of that, um, as opposed to the rule of uncle um, or aunt or whatever, um, it's, it's, it's not going to take, right? So Nina Turner trying to win that congressional district with all of the social, without having any social um, institutions that actually uphold her, rather the social institutions are made for, emerged from, and are designed to mutually reinforce a quality of crappy black politics that will keep, um, you know, a certain faction of black people wealthy by serving white liberal interests. White liberalism, which isn't necessarily concerned with, with black justice, right? And um, once again, people who are just looking at this, oh, well, you know, Cori Bush won. Cori Bush is running against Lacey Kay, Clay not a 45-year-old black woman, right? If Cori Bush were running against, if Lacey Clay were a 45-year-old black woman, Cori Bush would have lost. Thankfully, um, she wasn't, and, and, she, and Cori Bush won. I like Cori Bush. I'm a fan of Cori Bush. I think we need uh, to, to, <laughs> to more of her. But in order to win these races, you're going to have to plant social institutions. So when I say like every DSA chapter, every DSA chapter should also come with immediately, day one, the plan to plant a liberation theology church in that same town. Wherever your DSA chapter is, you need a liberation theology church. And there's liberation Islam. I suspect there's liberation Judaism. I don't know, but I know there's liberation Islam. I know there's liberation uh, Christianity um, because the default churches uh, institutions and the de default spiritual institutions are going to uphold whatever status quo you're trying to, political status quo you're trying to supplant, right? So you need to um, plant spiritual organizations that actually uphold a better political vision in the same way that unions uphold democratic politics, even though unions have a particular interest and democratic politics has a universal interest, Right? So um, not just a, you also need a, a vision of family that's institutionalized. And I think a vision of mental health that's institutionalized. Like the Panthers have a great vision of, of, of health, 
that that was institutionalized. They had mental health clin- They had mental. They had health clinics, but in of those in those health clinics, I, I should I should have a video. I, uh, in those health clinics, they also had a community advocate because the idea is that you don't really have health unless you have standing and advocacy in your community. So that is a vision of health that folds in actually the external conditions, not external, the the political conditions of health and mental health and physical health. So you would go to a a Black Panther clinic and then you would, um, at the end of the doctor checking you out or the the nurse practitioner checking you out, they would, uh, you would see a a community advocate because the idea is of course you're not physically healthy unless you also have um, uh, community advocacy. Right? So we need that as a vision of health care. Instead, you have the liberal vision of health care, which tries to privatize all of your political problems. <laughs> Black people, if you're poor and you're broke, um, you know, the therapist isn't necessarily going to help you because what you need is money and a job and standing. Um, you don't necessarily need... Uh, there's, a, there's a meme about this. Yeah, therapy doesn't solve being overworked and underpaid. Antidepressants can't cure poverty. Now, they might get you out of bed to fight, but they won't actually cure the poverty. I'm trying to grab this uh, picture for you. But liberals will tell you, and they'll put forth an ideological vision of mental health that just talks about therapy and antidepressants and not the fact that you're being overworked, underpaid, and that, you're, you're, and that you need to just not be poor anymore. Right? So you need ideological institutions, including mental health institutions, that put forth a vision of therapy that includes um, uh, you know, actually being treated well on the job. Because if you're stressed out because you're not being treated well on the job, talking about not being treated well on the job doesn't necessarily get you being treated well on the job. I'm putting, yeah, I have the, uh, right? And so those social institutions, including, um, you know, your therapist or whatever, that uphold a certain political vision will end up with a polity that promotes that political vision, right? So if you have, uh, you know, therapy that's designed for political liberation, the people who go to that therapy will actually vote for people who vote for candidates who talk about political liberation and self-determination, right? So you need all of these ancillary social institutions that uphold a political vision in order to actually then get people to vote for that political vision. Because if you're groomed by conservative social institutions, even if they're black, or if you're groomed by neoliberal social institutions, let's just say like, you know, private, private charity and markets will take care of all of this. Um, you're not going to understand as possible a qual- and just a quality of progressive politics that the nation, especially black people, need. Right? So all of these social institutions uphold a politics. The black church, the HBCUs, the NAACP, you know, they're all black institutions, but they uphold a politics that is functionally anti-racial equality. Uh, Because that's how they were designed and that's how they're sustained. So if you're serious about a politics that will end in racial equality, you're going to have to actually do social interventions and plant and start Social institutions. Look, had Bernie Sanders given me a hundred thousand or three hundred thousand dollars in twenty sixteen to build a media empire, who knows what would have happened? Who knows what would have happened, right? So you need to plow money into black social progressive institutions, um, and that uphold political visions of of, of racial progress. Not necessarily plowing money into particular political candidates. Right, So you don't have to support me, although I think you should, at www.funkyacademic.com. But you should support black media. You should support black liberation theology. There's a guy, um, a pastor by the name of Kevin Crosby, over in, 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 in Louisville. Um, St. Simmons? Uh, Simmons? Uh, he does good work, right? So you should, like, legit liberation theology, not... Like any, any, any pastor who thinks that you'll get your reward in heaven and not like on earth isn't doing liberation theology. They're doing black management. Um, 
You get your reward here. Not, you don't get it by individual work. You get it by political organizing. So this idea and organizing with other black people for, for racial justice. Right? So a real liberation theology will actually support that. Um, so Kevin Crosby, I want to say he's in, yeah, he's in Louisville. Um, uh, and he's a good guy and he does real liberation theology. And d d don't be surprised, like, Again, he's a weed and not a, 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 a feature. Don't be surprised by the fake black liberation theology preachers who actually just preach a variety of neoliberalism. Um, so you need to throw money. And I don't, I'm not a big fan of Reverend Barber. People like him for the poor campaign. I think he's got, um, I don't like his tactics. I don't like his vision. I think um, it's not concrete enough. I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan. Um, I think, uh, I, but um, I think other liberation theology pastors probably do a better job and could do a better job. That means maybe if you're going to throw money, throw money about a, a, a liberation um, uh, uh, seminaries, right? So if you have like a ton of money and you're not going to give it to me, maybe you have a talk with a um, – uh, you organize to support seminary education because seminaries produce pastors, right? You want this is why the CRT debate is important, right? So you need critical race theory in schools in order as a social institution to get people to make better political judgments, right? So um, I guess the 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 most important part of this video is that Nina Turner did not lose this race because she was a bad candidate or ran a camp bad campaign. She lost this race because of social factors that weren't instituted that would need to, that uphold her um, uh, rival, but do not uphold her, uh, her vision, uh, that do not uphold Turner's vision of political governance, which is where I think we need to go, right? So if you're serious about making these uh, areas progressive, if you're serious and not about not having, I will say, I do have a bone to pick. I do have a bone to pick with white progressives who think that like we have to make sure that we don't lose the white working class and we have to make sure we don't alienate the white working class. Look, black people killed Bernie in South Carolina in 2016. Black people killed Bernie in 2020. So instead of like trying to chase these white working class people, I think you need to get your black game better because we will do it again. Because the Nancy Pelosi Democrats invest in black institutions. The Clinton Democrats invest in black institutions. And make no mistake, one Barack Obama is going to spend the next 35 years of his life making sure that no progressive candidate um, attains office that would make Obama's legacy look feckless like it was. Right? So you have to understand that you need to build institutions, social institutions, like a black left version of focus on the family, a black left version of, of, of uh, uh, liberation theology, uh, yeah, uh, uh, theology, a black left version, uh, a curriculum that we push in public schools, a black left version of understanding of property ownership, um, a black left version of all of these other discretionary institutions that as it stands, if you imbibe them, you end up voting for a company Democrat, right? And people who say like, well, you know, we just need to wait for generation change or turnover. No, it doesn't work like that. Institutions are not like people. They don't die like people do. They are, the logic of reproduction is built into the institution. Right? So they reproduce themselves. So younger black people are just time delayed older black people if you don't change the institution. So you need inter institutional interventions. So that means either changing the institution that already exist or starting new institutions that are, that'll run counter in a better message um, than the institutions as they stand. Thank you for your time. I hope this has been helpful. Do not rely on generational change that will not help. Right. What you can, if you want to feel good, it turns out black people are alienated from the standing institutions. So there's a lot of, but just organizing them to vote isn't going to work. You need to institutionalize them into voting for, into better politics um, if you want a real black progressive politics. All right. So they're alienated from the bad institutions, but they are just 
uninstitutionalized because black left institutionalized institutions get targeted. All right. Thank you for your time. And, you know, if you like what I'm doing, go ahead and give money to www.funkyacademic.com because I think more people need to hear what I say if we want a better world. Take care.